Well, hey there, and welcome back to the Rose Rock YouTube channel. Uh, before we get started with today's song, I want to remind you that we have an online course now available. So um, these YouTube videos are pretty much meant for people that have some experience. So they're going to dive right into some things that may be unfamiliar to you if you're a beginner. So if you are a beginner and you've come across this video, awesome. I'm so glad you're here. But click on the link in the comments, go to our course, and uh, buy it. Because that is going to be a way that you can get all the foundational stuff. There's great downloadable PDFs you can have with you. You can print them off, use them. There's multi-camera uh, instructional videos that are going to walk you through all of the basics so that these videos make more sense. And any video, okay? There are a lot of us on YouTube teaching guitar and there are lots of ways to learn this awesome instrument. So um, we are going to dive in to one of my favorite strumming songs to play and teach. So if you're new to strumming or new to like advanced strumming, um, this is a really good one. If you're not, if you've been doing it for years and you've never learned this song, highly recommend it because it is super fun, okay? So it's called All For You by Sister Hazel. Um, if you're my age or maybe a little older, mid 30s, uh, you will probably know this song. If you're younger, you it's gonna be one, one of those, you can be like, what the heck is this song? You look it up, you can be like, oh yeah, okay, I know this one. I've heard this in ancient movies. <laughs> anyway, so, all right, we've got a handful of chords we're gonna use. So, we've got G, A minor, C, D, and E minor. So this is quite a few of our standard chords, right? Those are gonna be all the chords we're gonna use in the song, all in different orders in all in different ways, okay? So the very first thing you hear, by the way, they recorded this song in A flat. So they used a capo on the first fret, but they are gonna play all the exact same shapes that we're about to play. Now, I usually, if a song calls for a capo, I usually skip it because I don't wanna assume that you have a capo or wanna use a capo. Um, it, you can always add it in. And all you would do is take everything we're doing, once you put that capo on and move it up one fret, okay? So we're gonna assume you don't have a capo. The very first thing that happens, they kind of have this big strum. And they just kind of move around there on the strings. It's called an arpeggio, okay? So we've got high E, B, G, high E, E, B, and then. And I'm doing a little bit of an alternate picking thing there. So up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Um, after a big G strum. So that's kind of how they set the song up. It's kind of a cool little, here's the song, here we go, and then boom, we dive into the verse. Um, almost like you're kind of sitting there in the room with them. It's kind of neat. Um, all right, so the verse starts off with only two chords. We have A minor and D. Those are the two chords that are gonna happen throughout the verse, okay? So the A minor, if you're not familiar, we've got open A string, second finger, second fret D, third finger, second fret G, First finger, first fret B, and open high E. Honestly, one of my favorite chords. Okay, so we've got A minor and D. Okay, so before we dive into the strumming for this song, there's something that I wanna make very clear, okay? So when we're learning guitar, I have a lot of in-person students. In fact, I had to cancel some lessons tonight because the weather wasn't very nice. So here we are, I'm doing a YouTube video. Um, I have a lot of in-person students, and I would say the majority of them, when they first learn how to strum, they get really locked into, you know, is it a down, up, down, or an up, down, up? And you know, if a strumming pattern, this is kind of the strumming pattern for the song, they kind of see it as, is it a down, down, up, up, down? And they're, they're watching their hand, they're very focused on, you know, is that a down stroke there or an up stroke there, okay? That is not how I want you to approach strumming your guitar. Because if you're too focused on, is it a downstroke, is it an upstroke, then you're, you're not focused on the feel and the rhythm, okay? So what I like to, how I like to set this up is we're gonna have a one and two and three and four. We're gonna have an eighth note. The tempo of the song is about like this. Three, four, one, two, three, four. What we wanna do is we wanna set our timekeeper our right hand to an eighth note rhythm. One and two and three and four, okay? That doesn't change. Now I'm gonna play this for you one time before I explain it. Okay, there's a little more to it than that, but if you noticed, if you were watching my right hand, which I hope you were, 
you would see that I'm doing a down, I'm doing the exact same eighth note rhythm the entire time. It doesn't change. Okay? So I'm not, you know, down, down, up, 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 down. That's too robotic, okay? I'm doing a... I am doing a down, down, up, up strumming pattern, but it's in the context of an eighth note timekeeper, okay? That's a, a term I usually use because this right hand bouncing up and down is how we're kind of keeping our times, how we're internalizing that rhythm. If you've seen my videos before, if, you, if you're one of my students, uh, you've heard me talk about this a ton. It is so important to internalize that beat and subdivide it with your right hand, okay? Those are a lot of big words. I, th I think you're probably following along though. It's not rocket science. I always like to say, if you're in school, your math homework is harder than this. If you're a working person, your job is harder than this, okay? Just stick with it. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but trust me, this is not rocket science, okay? So down, down, up, up, down, but I've got a right hand that is constantly moving, okay? Even when it's not strumming the strings, it's very important. So we've got A minor. D. And what I like to say is, you know, you've got that timekeeper going. And so just listen for that pattern, okay? If you look this song up, you know, how to play it, the chord chart, it's not going to tell you anything about strumming, generally, okay? Unless you find a YouTube video like this one. Maybe the, the person will talk through it. Um, but the, the chord chart that you get probably isn't going to say much. If you're trying to learn it by ear, you have to kind of pick it out. And so you're going to establish, okay, I've got that eighth note, two and three and four uh, right hand movement. And I'm gonna be hitting the strings on da 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 That's kind of how that sounds, right? So you're just gonna keep that eighth note going, and you're gonna be hitting the strings where you hear those strings hit in the recording. So you hear a ba 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 ba. And I'm gonna tell you something. You're gonna feel silly. It helps to do it out loud. It helps to do it with your voice. Because if you can internalize that rhythm with your right hand and kind of project the part with your mouth, you're going to you're gonna internalize all of it and you're gonna be amazed at what that does for your guitar playing, okay? The more parts of our body we can get involved, the, at that point we have our brain, we have our head, we're speaking it, we might be tapping our foot. If you watch me play, I'm generally kind of, you know, nodding my head. Um, lots of parts of my body are involved in this, and that is gonna make you so much better uh, and so much more efficient with this with a part like this. Okay, so not only do we have this, we have some movement inside of these chords. So specifically on the A minor, we kind of toggle on and off the third finger. We do something like that. And then on the D chord, we toggle on and off the second finger, okay? So specifically, we would call this like an A minor to an A minor seven, and then back down. And then we have a D, D, uh, D suspended two, back to D. Now, if I were the writer of the song, or if I were to write a chart for the song, I would not write those chords in there. Those are just technically what you're playing. But I like to think of that as, as more of just some, some chord movement, or like a little bit of a melody inside of the chord, okay? But it goes a long way. Like this part doesn't really sound like the song without that movement. Right? Now it sounds like Sister Hazel. Pretty cool, right? Um, so those are the, the notes that are happening. That is something you can add into most any strumming pattern. Um, you have to be a little careful though. You have to make sure that the, and this one does a great job of it, that the note you're pulling, like if you pull that third finger off, you've got to make sure that the note you're pulling off to is in the key of the song, okay? And that dives into a little more intense, um, you know, music theory, scales, things like that. That is not what this platform is for. We're just having fun learning cover songs, okay? With with some good technique too, right? Um, <clears throat> we have that A minor pull off to the G note. The G note is in the key. And then the key of this song is actually G, by the way. And then we pull off that second finger. We go from an F sharp to an E. Both notes are within the G scale, so we're good to go, okay? If that got a little over your head, no problem, okay? That was okay. We're all in different spots. These YouTube videos are awesome, but it's addressing, well, the audience is huge, right? You guys are all in different places, um, myself included. So if that's a little over your head, doesn't matter. Can you still play the part? Absolutely. So let's keep going. 
Okay, so the first half of the verse is that A minor. kind of the part we're at, right? Um, the second half of the verse, some people might call it a pre-chorus. I don't know if I, I don't know how I'm feeling today. Maybe it's a pre-chorus. Maybe it's the second half of the verse. I don't know. Um, we're going to go to an E minor. Nothing really changes except we're, we're switching the, the chord progression from E minor to A minor instead of A minor to D. Okay, so this whole line is is same. It's the same strumming pattern. The right hand won't do anything different. E minor, A minor. You've got that uh, movement in there if you want. And at the very end, we have this cool little hit. Now that I would call this kind of an extra credit part, right, or a bonus section. Okay, can you play the song without it? Yes. Are you gonna get a little closer to what the recording sounds like with it? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, so the last four measures, count them, four, of the verse are going to be E minor, A minor. We have a little hit, okay? The hit happens on beat two of the measure of D that we go to. So beat two of the first measure of D. So we have A minor, I'm sorry, E minor, A minor. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And then we go into the chorus. So we have E minor, A minor, D, D. That's four measures. The third measure is gonna be a D chord and he's gonna hit on beat two. Now I told you this was extra credit. You don't have to get here, okay? This is just a really cool little thing to challenge yourself with. Um, I have to use these big, crazy, complex words to de describe exactly what's going on. Um, but if you listen to the song and you just kind of keep that hit in mind, your ear and your brain are way better than you might think they are. So if you just listen to this a few times, in fact, put the guitar down for a second, listen to the song and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Okay. You'll hear this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then we go into the chorus. Okay. So remember it just hits on beat two, rest, boom, rest, boom. Um, and then we just strum through the D chord, we get to the chorus. So I kind of blow through some of these sections sometimes. The gist, the summary, or the cliff notes of the verse is just gonna be. Okay, ba da 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 da. Not every single measure has to be the exact same strumming pattern. Don't get hung up on, oh, is it down, up, up, down? That is a recipe for disaster. Your train will go off the tracks very quickly. You just want to feel that eighth note rhythm, right? And know where those chords happen and just hear that ba 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 kind of feel. Okay, moving on. We got to get to the chorus. So. There's the chorus. So, um, awesome chorus. We have a lot of what we call pushes in this chorus. So a push is when a chord hits on the eighth note before you would expect it to. So what I mean is, generally, if you change from like the G to the C, you would go one, two, three, four, one. That's not what this song does. And in fact, that would sound nothing like this song. And by adding pushes in, or these little eighth note slides to where the chords happen, you're gonna hear it sound quite different and much more like Sister Hazel. One and two and, and four and, one and, and, and. You hear those chords are kind of happening a little early. They're kind of like, jumping out at you a little bit. And notice they're on an upstroke. Down, up, up, up. So I still have my eighth note movement. I'm hitting the strings a lot more often. Notice I'm not gonna get too deep into, it's a down, up, down, down, whatever. That is not how we learn songs. We have our eighth note movement, but we know that the progression is G, C, A minor, D. And we also know 
that we are going to be pushing the C, the A minor, and the D. So one and two If not, pause this video, go listen to the song a million times, okay? I promise you, it may not a million, like three or four, and you'll hear it, okay? You'll hear where that guitar is kind of jumping a little bit, it's jumping off of the beat. That's what a push sounds like. Very common, you've heard this a million times. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I hesitate to say that, you know, when, you, when I said earlier, you normally hear the progression just doing like this. It's really not normal. That would just be more of a straight rhythm. This is And if you notice, if you know the song He's pushing on the vocal like where the lyric happens So the lyrics and the guitar part are sort of married together, which is good. That's what that's what makes a good song, okay? Um, all right, the whole chorus is that same progression G C Watch my right hand, okay? I just, I'm air guitaring now, but is it doing anything different? No, it's the same eighth note pattern. When I go from the verse, okay, so that was a jump from the verse to the chorus. And that's not how the song goes, but you could, I just wanted to illustrate, you know, that the right hand was doing the exact same thing for both parts, but you heard a very different guitar part because I was just choosing to play the strings in different places, but I had my timekeeper moving, okay? If this isn't how you've learned so far, it's gonna feel like you're throwing with your left hand if you're if you're usually throwing with your right hand, okay? It's gonna feel like you're, you're writing backwards, okay? It's not gonna feel comfortable, and I'm sorry about that, but if you can, Buckle down and start teaching, you know, reteaching yourself how to get that timekeeper going and internalize that rhythm. You will become a much better musician. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, that's my goal for you. It's not just can you can you hack out a few guitar parts. It is I want you to be a great musician. Okay. And internalizing that rhythm, subdividing it with your right hand. Those are things that we want to strive for. Okay. So at the very end of the chorus, we actually don't have much more to learn. Okay. Because it just repeats these parts quite a few times. So at the very end of the chorus, we kind of have this um, G, C, D, G, okay? So at the very end, he's like, uh, okay? Couple pushes there, one and two and, and. hear that. So uh, cool little section, and that might be kind of an extra credit, all right? That might be kind of like the, end of the verse part that we talked about where it's like, you know, you can play it without that part. You've got the meat and potatoes, but this is one of those spices that you can kind of throw on top just to make it a little extra special. Okay, bridge. We just have C, E minor. Okay, and it's a very standard strumming pattern. You're gonna hear that clear as day, but the chords are just C, E minor, C, E minor, C, E minor, and it ends on a D. Okay, so the whole bridge. play the guitar solo if you're playing the rhythm under the solo I'm not going to talk about soloing in this video uh, it's the chorus chords okay and then we go to a verse after that chorus we do the exact same thing now the whole feel of the song drops down I would call this like a down verse but the guitar the acoustic guitar is doing the exact same thing okay the Same movement, same pattern, all of that is the same. Uh, then when we get to a chorus at the very end, we go a cappella. okay? The, you know, in parts like this, it's good to know the chord progression. You can hear the vocal and the harmonies kind of moving chords. Even though there is no chord happening with an instrument, voices are instruments, okay? So you kind of hear those chords changing. So it's the same chord progression happening. There's just no instrument like guitar 
forming those chords, the voices are kind of doing it. So it's kind of cool to know that. It makes you a better listener because you can kind of hear the, the chords from the voices, which I think is cool, but I'm kind of a nerd. And then we finish out, you know, the guitar takes it away throughout the rest of the chords. That's the whole song, okay? So if you learned anything today, I hope it is that when we're playing a song like this or any strumming song, we just wanna identify, you know, what are the chords? Where do they go? You know, I've got a numbers chart written here. That's what I've been looking at. So I know, you know, how many measures do I hold each chord? I wanna identify that first. Then I wanna get my timekeeper going. One and two and three and four. And from there, you you just need to listen and internalize that that rhythm that you hear. So on the verse, do, 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 do. the chorus that one kind of jumps out at you you should hear that one pretty clearly because that's what the vocal does i can't sing anymore. i can't sing very well on a good day and that was just terrible so apologize um okay please let me know what you think. Post it in the comments. Don't forget about the online courses. Check out our website if you're in Oklahoma. We are in Tulsa, the Tulsa area. We are expanding to Oklahoma City soon. Don't tell anybody. Um, we are looking to expand into all kinds of other places. So um, if you live, you know, somewhere close to here, middle of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Kansas, whatever, and you want us in your city, let me know. Send it, uh, you know, hit me up, comments. I'll, I'll see it, okay? So I think that's it. I am not uh, a YouTube professional. I don't know all the things I'm supposed to say. Like the video, share with your friends, hashtag it, I don't know. Um, I will see you again soon because these are just way too much fun. So enjoy it and have a great day.